Uh, and I mean, I get it, they're on the front line. Some people ain't seen their GP for like three <laughs> years. <laughs> 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 Hold on. She said, everybody started laughing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I said, I tell you what, my daughter <laughs> will say, I'm selfish. <laughs> 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 she does. Oh. Th there's an entrenched hate. And I recall there was a time where a um, young person threw a hard book at me in other circumstances i would have blown up your face is challenged like the digital currencies That's and coming. stuff like that i've been saying it for about five years now <laughs> <laughs> and i was about to say this sounds like the conversation is going to start going towards the silver no, tin does make you feel like you know, used it before yeah of course you have are we working oh, we're in yeah. the room uh, <clears throat> it's up to you we don't have to have this because yeah, it no, don't feel like a you better yeah what are you trying to say? <clears throat> trying to say I talk like I've got cotton ball in my mouth. No, but I can hear myself as well. <laughs> oh, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Is it too loud? Go Are you good? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. All right, sweet. Right, so, this is as far as I got to, Ruth. I literally just... <laughs> 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 just want to put it out there. If you come here expecting a plan, I've literally... My plan was to get your ass in here, have a conversation. Okay, my ass is here. Your ass is here. I need to have a just talk of a drink. Mm. But no, we've been saying it for ages. And to be fair, I've been saying it to a lot of people. But out of all the people that I've been asking to come in, the others didn't come through. And I thought, it. We have good conversations. And although it might only be a conversation, I thought we'll record it. And then hopefully, if anything comes from it, then we can do it. Mm. And that's something I've got to be mindful of. I've got Adam in my ear. He's going, Mike, discipline. Mike, discipline. If I turn my head and start talking, he hates it because it goes real quiet. So you have to stay here, which is why I don't really <coughs> like using these. But... Come closer. I'm closer. <clears throat> ah, so yeah, so no plan, just a conversation. Hopefully it sounds right. Hopefully the visual's good. Yeah. Um, but this is, I'd say, a friend, a colleague. I, she doesn't go by the name Ruth McKenna, but I call her behind her back Ruth <laughs> McKenna. <laughs> and I said to someone yesterday, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have a chat with my colleague. I've been putting it off for ages and ages. Yeah, he's like, that's nice, that's nice. I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, told her a bit about what you do. And I'm like, yeah, I called her Ruth McKenna. And they didn't get it. I don't think they know Paul McKenna. I don't know, they might not, but yeah. Um, I don't even know where that come about. How did that come about? I know how that came about. It was... Um when we first worked together and the second phase was here at Shuttleworth College. I can't remember where our residential was, but there was a young uh, person who wanted to go to leave programme. I know exactly, yeah. And yeah. lots of other young people had left programme. But this young person in particular, her mum couldn't get to wherever we were on residential. West Runton. That's it. And I spoke to the mum and I had asked the mother if it was possible to use NLP. Yeah. And because we had to work in pairs when we were working with young people, you were with me when... In that conservatory type yeah. thing. How many years ago was this first? Let's this kind of picture. was, I want to say, 2016. Yeah, I was going to say 2016, 2017. 100%. Yeah, it was my very first Mad. program, yeah. or the year of the first program, because it was October. So I had done the summer program, and then this was the October one, I believe. And I remember I had to do some... I was actually using conversational change. Can I tell you what I remember from that? So I remember sitting in a fairly dark conservatory, not, not well lit, mm. and before Ruth got called in or took control of the situation, myself and Steph... I believe it was Steph, I tried to speak to this young person many a times, trying to find out what was going on. You know, do you want to talk about it? All that sort of stuff. Nothing. Nothing at all. And then, yes, we're in the conservatory. It's myself, Ruth, and this young person. And all I can remember, I, I can't remember what was said, but you was, there was questions or talk of like, um, I don't know if it was about memories and stuff or just, 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 but the one thing that really stuck in my mind was that I'm sure you made like a, a tapping noise or something within that. And I remember like after that happening, I, I looked at you and you didn't see me. I'm thinking, what the f*** is she doing? <laughs> and then about a minute, not even a minute later, this young person was just 
pouring it out to you. Everything on the table. It was just like, what the f*** just happened there, man? That was insane. It, my hairs were standing up. Whatever it was, but I can't. Can you, can you remember exactly what was said without going into too much detail? Just, just briefly, I just remember. I remember speaking to the mum, asking the mum permission first because in using NLP, especially with young people, there's a lot of techniques that we don't use. So conversational change is one of the easiest as ways. So basically, communication is only as good as the response you get. So you remember you said about her just laying it all out. Well. We knew there was a problem. We just didn't know how to access it. So I was basically doing a little bit of testing just to find out her style of communication, whether she was a visual, a kinesthetic, auditory, whichever her senses that she was leaning to. I just started responding back to her in those ways. And I was asking her questions that would just give me more information on how I could best help her. I knew that the end goal was for her to stay so I had to find different ways, that things that she liked that I could relate to the programme to convince her to stay. Do you remember? Mm, but we had to go me. back. We, we did, I, did, I did go back with her in terms of where some of these fears, these anxieties presented itself. Because I was with her, I thought, why not work with her on that? Let's, you know, do some stacking or some techniques. And that's what we did all just through questions and talking it was a short space of time as well because mm. the, the program we was on was only like a four-day thing anyway or, or for that part of it that yeah, residential yeah bit, because we would have come back here and then it would have been the second That's part right. and i remember coming back here very clearly because the minute the mum found out who you were when you when 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 you got off the coach because she'd never seen you at this mm. point she mm. spoke to you on the phone mm. but she'd come running up to you didn't she give you a cuddle and i remember that man and it was like that was emotional man because you've got you've helped the daughter you helped the mum i think you started working with the mum as well right? yeah yeah insane yeah get them all involved all, roofs all, in all, town. All, all, all through <laughs> just conversating which yeah. can you explain what nlp is because this is something that i would love to know more about i do know a bit about it i've seen it in action but i wouldn't be able to break it down like this one would so what the hell for people that are probably going to watch this that have no idea what is nlp so nlp is neuro linguistic programming and basically it's really based on excellence it is it's a study on excellence and how we can become the better versions of ourselves through using language and the programming and how we think you know how we think it does portray the behaviors that we will develop or the outcomes that we will have and sometimes we are in more of a negative framework and that can also be changed through language to a positive. For example, I can and I can't. You're both right. You can do something or you can't do something. But it doesn't mean that you can't learn it. It doesn't mean that you can't change the language around it to say that I can do things. So NLP really helps people change the neurological patterns, the ways of thinking that changes their behavior, which then changes their outcomes. There you go. That's better than what, do you know what I normally say? <laughs> I normally say, it's basically just reprogramming your brain. Mm. Now, if you're someone literal, like that suffers mm. from autism, or has got autism, not necessarily suffers, because, you know, autism can be great for some people, mm. and it's been great, and made people a lot of money in some realms. But, yeah, I would just say, basically, it's just reprogramming your brain. And you've got some people that go out thinking, like, wires, cables, pulling bits out. No, 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 no. It's, it's ba it sounds basic, but it is literally just starting off with that, the language, right? And that's mm. it. What we tell ourselves, self-sabotage and that, when that all creeps in. But yeah, yeah. that's how we met, right? Back mm. then, 2016. And I've known this queen since then. <laughs> and to be fair, we have many conversations. And this is just another one that I want to get done. In, in a number, Another one of many. And, and whether it's a conversation based on something that we've planned or not, I know it'll be good. And we haven't planned anything for this, but it's things like this that people may need to hear or would benefit from because how many times do you see them like posters or whatever change can't for can and blah blah, blah. and people think that's all bs don't they mm. and they do and the thing is i know it's easier said than done but if you start off small like what would be that is the, that's, that's starting off from small you've got to stop limiting the beliefs right yeah that that is a great way to to help make change um everyone's situation circumstances are different like, for example, we did podcasts in the lockdown. 
Yeah. And that was really to help address mental health, yeah. especially with the community that we work with, a lot of young people, a lot of parents, I'd say. Um, people are dealing with high stress levels. But if you had a way of reducing those things that you could control by the way you think and feel, that would give you another perspective on how you're looking at things or how you feel about things, the things that you're hearing yourself say. If you could hear yourself say something different, it would change. And that's, Again, I, I'd say it to so many people, but even I struggle to keep that going. Be realistic. How often do you, do you ever do the positive like affirmations and stuff? Yeah, I do positive affirmations, but every day we live in um, our lives and things present itself the first thing I do is I have to stop and look at whether this is something that's happening to me internally or externally. Mm. Because if I know it's external, I tend to put that secondary. And things that are internal, I tend to have that as my primary focus. Because I've got to be in the right state. I've got to be in the right mindset in order to do certain things. Because we're helping so many people who are going through so many different challenges, but you've got to help yourself as well. Mm. So, yeah, positive affirmations do help, but it's not the only thing. No. Sometimes reading um, books, I tend to read different types of books, like motivational books, books enhancing the language patterns, such as the book that I lent to you that I never got back. I have Why? now replaced yeah, it. Did you, <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear really funny? Did you find it? In the loft yeah, about two days ago. I'm not even joking, but <laughs> it's the same one as what I sent you a picture of that time. No, it's not that book. Well, they don't know what book you're on about, Ruth. I lent oh. Max the introduction to NLP because you did have a lot of interest yeah. in it. it blew and my I mind. think it's helped in a lot of ways. For personal practice, mm. it's like enhancing. When we first started, of course, you're nervous because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. But once you've done it once and you take those learnings and you look at what you, you've done, you can look at how you could do it better, which we were already discussing. There were times when we felt, I don't want to do this anymore. But when we actually looked at more of the positive aspects of it, it outweighed some of the points that we didn't find so successful, if that true. makes sense. That's true. So, um, yeah, the, the introduction to NLP, which is a book written by Dr. Bandler, it just helps you get an understanding of what it's like in one of the seminars, to be fair. I find when I read that book, it puts me right back being in that seminar. Do you but think you need to be in one of them seminars to get that, though? Absolutely. Yeah. I think the... The, the being in that arena, in those um, seminars, in that learning frame, because you don't only have Dr. Richard Bandler, you've got John Lavelle, you've got Kathleen Lavelle, you've got lots of different master trainers, trainers in NRP, and everybody's willing and wanting to help you. Yeah. So when you just do the um, practitioner, you kind of want to go on more. It's like more. a journey. It's, it's addictive. Yeah. It's similar to what we do as a job, like you just said. It can be challenging at times it can be overwhelming at times and it can be the sort of job whether you're used to it or not where you're like oh, i don't know if i could do this again but actually there's so much more positives within there's something addictive about that especially when there's the reward and doing good and helping other people um, but i've never been to one of them seminars but i can imagine it to be very motivational obviously and i've seen you do something similar probably on a smaller scale, but with young people and stuff. And this woman can motivate the masses. <laughs> but she can also tell them off as well, the masses. <laughs> Big voice. Yeah. But you, the thing is, if you're willing to, if you're open to that sort of thing, it's easy, right? Mm. You went searching for it. What was it actually on that note? Why, why did you get into NLP? How did that happen? Was it through a book? Was it through a film? Was it, What got you into studying NLP? Okay, so let me start with where my life was at that point. I have a condition called keratoconus, which is a visual impairment. I was diagnosed at 15, but I, you know, you're young. You don't take visual <laughs> impairments seriously when you're young. But it's only when you get to that point when you actually lose something, you realise how valuable it, it is. Mm. And so for me, 
getting to that point in my adulthood how do I raise a family deal with a visual impairment deal with work and at that point it was I felt quite pressurized I felt like my back was pressing up against the wall I actually just I had ran out of tools I was a professional person but I didn't really have much personal development skills so I think my first stepping stone I went to um, Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within event, which was really motivating, really helped clear the pathway for me. But there was one thing that Tony Robbins said was about learning from the best and that if anyone that had been on this wanted to take it further, he recommended doing um, the NLP course with Dr. Bandler. So I started my search from then and that was 2012. And I think in 2014, I became a licensed practitioner in NLP. Yeah, and then we met a few years later yeah. after that. Yeah. That's that, that. I can't believe it's actually been that long that we've known each other anyway, because it was 2016, so you know, you know, it's been a fair few years now. Mm-hmm. Years, the thing is, three years were just, well, two and a bit years were just taken from us, really, yeah. really let's yeah. be real. But when we first met, we was both almost seasonal staff I wasn't even fully employed I wasn't full-time member I don't think you came in as seasonal staff as well and then when I did actually get the full employment thing we actually formulated they got us to formulate and plan and design and deliver the program that got us working together fully mm-hmm. for that period of time a couple of years whatever it was was that me what the flipping hell was that I'm not sure. <laughs> this place is haunted. If you heard that, that definitely was a spirit just walking right over my legs. Yeah, no. Oh, it's this. Boing. Um, yeah, we created that program, didn't we? So we was working together on Health to Mind, mm. which was, if I get this right, therapy, ther- blah, 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 therapy through physical activities incorporated with NLP, with NLP incorporated. It was like a two, a dual program. Yeah. That was based on the pre... Um, supposition that um, the body and the mind are linked Mm -hmm. remember so we kind of featured out different sessions and we looked at what exercises would go best with some of the Mm presuppositions or any of the titles that we had called that course trying to think of them now right i've got a couple there was definitely limiting limiting belief absolutely limiting pace belief. and direction or something yeah, yeah. um there was uh, i know that we did move it towards and moving away it. yeah yeah moving towards moving away and um i've got do you know what? i've got a flyer probably in one of the offices next door <laughs> probably just go and get it right? Don't there, there was there was there was about i think there was six sessions yeah. I think yeah um, six to I think it was eight but I think the group that we had which was developed that first one I think they moved them the thing, good thing about it it's almost like a program that evolved with the young people and it still does when mm. we get this sort of work you can't I don't know you might say something different someone else might say something different but you can write session plans and you can have a foundation for a program especially when you're looking at sort of better in one's self-esteem or well-being or physical state or whatever mental state mm. like you can write foundations and session plans for, for a program but unless you're willing to evolve it with whatever's in the room, it ain't going to work, right? Absolutely, I think absolutely. that's why we do so good. It's like, it don't, to me, that don't take a genius to work out, but it's like, when you talk to other people, it's like, well, we've got this session plan, you know, you, you, you've got to do that within 10 minutes, you've got to do that. I'll have a look at it, but I'm telling you now, I'm not sticking to it, because if they're talking about something that's current, mm. and I'm finding out, like you would do in, mm. the, do in the sessions, I'm going to roll with that, and that's what I had to get through to some of the other guys, mm. is like, if we spend 40 minutes talking about the damaging impacts of social media that these are ever expressing, let's talk about it, because it's current to them, mm. Mm. so it's like, we can have the foundations, and that's what I've, I've never, although Health to Mind didn't blow up as big as what we would have hoped it to be, it's still there, we still get interest, and a lot of the stuff that I learned from that I take into yeah. skills booster sessions. Yeah. I mean, we deliver these sessions called skills boosters, and it could be anything from like mental health and well being to like finances, budgeting, and, and sort of those yeah. lists are massive. Yeah. But I was a bit like, when that came from, I was a bit gutted. I was like, oh, this is basically what we wanted to get a contract like this for the program that we designed. <laughs> but then I started to think, actually, no, I'm learning more from delivering these sessions because mm. where we was, I was tunnel visioned on what I already knew. Those experiences that are challenging and a bit, you know, get you out of your comfort zone, and this definitely did. I had to deliver a session on budgeting. Mm. I'm in debt. 
And then freaking how am I going to do a <laughs> session on budget? Do you know what I mean? You're just thinking. But you came over that. But then do you know what? I learned from that session yeah. and I also incorporated some of the bits that we'd done six, seven years ago mm. on Health to Mind because it's still so current. Yeah. It's like you learn as you go and you can... It's the resource belt, right? The toolkit. You never forget about that stuff, but you find ways to slip it into sessions when it's needed. And I think that's why I enjoy what we do so much because we can't perform miracles, but we are able to get in front of a fair amount of people and actually deliver sessions that would be beneficial to I believe anybody absolutely and even with like the financial budgeting sessions you know there's a link between self-esteem and finances Mm. so if you're dealing with someone who has low self-esteem they might have low aspirations and what they would limit themselves or what they could do could be dealt with we're through um, previous experiences from other family members, yeah. their community, what they see, where they're living. But when you go through those things, one, a lot of the students will say they didn't know those things. Um, life isn't free. Some can say, but a lot of young people are consumers. And then when you start teaching them other ways, other opportunities... I've seen young people work out how they can start saving from being in school with pocket money for a mortgage because you need like 40 grand. Yeah. And if you want to leave home at some point, what job will you do that will allow you to fulfill those desires, those goals that you have? And we have to be practical. Mm. And we have to not only just encourage young people that it's possible, but we have to help them find ways in which they have the capacity to meet the very things that they say that they want. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's about being practical, but also being realistic, because what the system ain't doing is telling them that it's going to be costly. It's telling them that it's going to be this. They say that you need to do well at school in order to get a good job and all that sort of stuff, but they're not actually giving them the basic fundamentals on what they need to go out into the real wide world, whether that's resilience or communication skills or whatever. The confidence to go into these sort of um, situations and opportunities, it's like the budgeting ones. Like I genuinely thought I was going to walk into a classroom at college we had about six of these to deliver, me and Adam, for the first one. And it was like, I thought we was going to get booed out of the room because we normally go in and create vibes. We've got mm. therapy through physical activities. We've got music on. We've got fitness stuff. If they don't want fitness, we can do with this. We can, you know, it's all fun, but there is learning within the fun. Whereas this is a bit more sit-down thingy. But the amount of good response and feedback we got, there was a lot of uproars because they were fuming that they hadn't been taught how to budget or how much tax of their money would go to the tax man. And yeah, there was some students that was really angry, but it's like, hang on a minute, these are 16, 17, these ones that we was working with. How do they not know this? But then I thought back to me at school, and although I wasn't in school long, we were never taught that sort of stuff, like about the real world. And everything, although they put the pressure on about getting the right results, they don't get anyone ready for the big wide world. Mm. Not really. It's all wrapped up in cotton wool. And they sort of, once they're done with their, I don't know, don't hold this against me teachers, but <laughs> it's not you personally. But it's like all they really care, a lot of it is business, right? And they want their bums on seats. And if they're not on seats, they're not getting money from them. But if they become too challenging, which a lot of students are, especially coming out the back of lockdown, mm. I fear that most of the generation, most of the young'uns, have ended up with mindsets, minds like mine, unable to take in certain information, a little bit ADHD, no no attention span. And I think that's been sped up. And where it was, say, like a small proportion of people that used to be like that, I reckon we've got a whole generation like that now. We're screwed. We do have some work to do, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it's not a good idea to have loads of minds like this because there's no organisation in there. It's so <laughs> scatty. If the kids can't watch a 60-second video about bloody going to the... Do you know, see what I'm saying? The, you must have seen it in schools. You're in school mm. still. You're doing a lot of work within education that is it's scary because it's not just the kids. It's even people like myself struggling to just stick through an actual movie or a thing because we're so used to these short bursts of information, 24-7, 365. Mm. We've got our work cut out, Ruth. Yeah, we've definitely <laughs> got our work cut out. But, you know, it is different because you remember we went to Weatherfield, right? Yes. Now, I think with some schools, especially those that had um, those schools that cater for those that have special educational needs, 
I think they stayed open. They did. Through throughout lockdown. the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. So I think for those students, from what I've seen, I, I didn't really see that much of a dip because they were consistently kept with their routine, which was beneficial for their well-being, their mental health, and ours, their thank education. You very much. Cause we because was in there we were there. Yes, yeah, so it, it kept us busy. <laughs> yeah. and I didn't really want to promote it back in the day because I thought, hang on a minute, that's what really did confuse me as well. Because if you are quite a literal thinker or a literal person, when everyone else has been told to stay at home, especially those that are vulnerable, mm. but yet we've been given permission to go in and work with these that are vulnerable, mm -hmm. it just confused me a little bit. But I'm not going to say that I didn't enjoy it because... Uh, sitting down doing nothing was a strain and a struggle. It know? was very useful for everyone, I think, mm. especially for the those young people because we've seen them when we've visited college <laughs> with the same yeah. ones and you can see the progress that they've made within the consistency of attending school. So if we go to the flip side now, for those that didn't, who's... Um, education was interrupted, who was out of school months at a time because of the guidelines at that time, there has been an increase in needs, those that are not in education or training. Mm -hmm. There is like um, this new thought that the government will support me so I don't have to work because we were supported all throughout the pandemic. Some of these messages are not quite true mm -hmm. in the sense of we are all participators of society and that we all have a role there's something that we can all do and if we can live and thrive we're grateful for whatever assistance we get from the government but I don't think it should be set in stone so young in a young person's mind that they don't have to do anything that they don't have to contribute because I think that's where we're going to find a lot of challenges in getting them set to task to complete in work, especially if they've just refused and not been, because they will get to that stage of 18, 19, 20. Life will go on, parents will transition, and you'll have a young person who is now an adult who has basic limited skills, can't look after themselves, don't know about paying rent. Low self-esteem because of that. There we go. You it's see what all I'm saying? linked, and this is what we said at the beginning. And, and it's true, though, because the thing is, it, it all it's all connected, and and it's we are like you said. You said the young people are very much consumers. I think we're in a world where we're, we've always been consumers, but even more so now, whether it is through our tech and our devices, or through the foods and the things that we intake every day, we are all consumers. Um, but it's something that has been. Just, just, just increased massively, rapidly, and that isn't just the, the you know consumption of things, but the the like you say when you see what is it? I don't know what it was, what was it called? I forgot already. Furlough was it furlough? Yes. So yes. they was paying the government. The government mm. was paying out. Mm. Young people seeing that, right? The government are paying it. So, so I get what you're saying. There's people on the dole. There's people getting bills paid and, and and signing on and all that sort of stuff. Again, this is promoted. People are, are aware of this. It is making people a lot more likely to go do you know what well if it's the fan i'll get sorted out do you know what i mean and it's, it's yeah it's one of them ones man and it lockdown has like for weatherfield students like you say loads of pluses come out of that mm. but you can't forget like you say those that didn't get access there was some people that always had access but we were working with students that hated school but also hated home life so although they hated school, they preferred to be in school rather than at home for whatever reason, whether that's domestic violence, whether that's food, whatever. Um, but that was the, the the fact of the matter. And then you've got those that, you know, they, 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 well, them lot, they have to stay at home in the environment they're not happy with. So what that's doing to them, again, it's just knock-on effects. There's so many different aspects, so many different avenues we ain't seen nothing yet. I think no. it's still uh, it's still playing out, isn't it, really? But we're working towards, like any opportunity we get, we're always working towards better outcomes. I think that's how we go into yeah. every session. Look at Let's look back at times when we've just seen an uproar of cheers and laughter and clapping and motivation just from one session of effective communication. 
those young people take that, set goals, and literally are manifesting the desires in their own life just because they're using certain tools and techniques. They're there, they're there, and it's always there, but sometimes we don't glean from those that are doing it to help those that are just not doing it. And that's similar like with NLP. What are those that are successfully doing? How are they thinking? What is their motivator? What, what steps have they taken that I could take and actually get the same results? Especially when they're achievable. Exactly. And, and the thing is, I, as I said, I don't practice what I preach a lot of the time. I should. We, we should you probably do the same. You tell people and help people in so many ways, but actually sometimes we neglect our own you know, well-being and stuff. But it's like, if it was as easy as what people say, telling you, changing can't for can and vice versa, positive affirmations... You know, you're amazing, you can do this, not self-sabotaging. If you're one of the people that go, well, it ain't as easy as that. If you haven't tried it, you cannot say that. Mm. And it ain't just going to be a miracle that works after the day one. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be a it's got to be a commitment. And this is what me and Adam often say. It's like short-term pain for long-term gain. Like, it might feel a bit painful, a bit discomforting, mm. having to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you're beautiful or to tell yourself you can do it. It'd be weird for me to do it, right? But the thing is... Don't knock it till you try it, whether it is going to bed or meditating, to go, going to sleep with a meditation on. I do worry about those ones, though. Bit of a conspiracy. But just imagine. <laughs> right, just imagine. Because I started doing it, right? And I started putting on this meditation every night before bed. And I was loving it. Uh, and I've got, I'll tell, talk about it in a bit more detail because there was one time when I was flying with the stars. Like, I literally went in. But we won't talk about that just yet. Mm. Um, but I started going to bed listening to this stuff, positive affirmation stuff. And I thought, this is four hours long. How do I know that when I'm asleep, <laughs> it doesn't change and go, right, now listen to me, boy. You're going to do it. And they start getting evil on me mm. because I don't know what they're actually <laughs> saying. They could be a frequency that I'm listening to. The roof. I'm going to wake up in the morning. They might not be alive next to me because I've just committed. You know, it happens. I'm not saying that happens, but p people do things in their sleep, right? And they, it happens. All right, Max, let me ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you taken your medication? No. no. <laughs> been... ha has anything happened as a result? I stopped bloody doing it. But while you were doing it, did you notice anything? Yes. What and did I don't, you notice? I noticed. I probably went in a bit too deep on the old uh, meditation because I went in real quick and for someone that never meditated like what I will say is I love all that stuff anyway um, definitely didn't get into a full routine of it I wanted to try and get it to a point where it's either just before bed or early in the morning and apparently early mornings meant to be better but the times that I did put effort and time into it Ruth I, I, I flew with the stars mm. like genuinely like at one point <clears throat> when I was getting deep into this meditation <laughs> I remember I was so relaxed. I had my head on the bedside table, bed, uh, the back of the bedboard, because I was sitting up against that. I know you're meant to probably sit cross-legged and that. Look, I'm not as agile as I used to be, but I was sitting upright in my bed against the backboard and my head was on the back thingy. And I, when I come back round, I didn't even realise that I was doing this, but my mouth was like this, right? I was like... And I sort of started to sort of... When they sort of bringing it back to a close, because they bring you back into, you know... I was like, my mouth was just fully open. If someone would have walked in the room, <laughs> I looked dead. But Ruth, it was insane. I flew with the stars, man. It was like, You're making me laugh. <laughs> was, if Sarah would have walked in the room. <laughs> and I was like, literally like that. But I felt, you know when they say like, concentrate on the gold glowing, mm. you know, I was sort of like, you know, getting real deep with it, trying to, and, Got to the point, like I say, I sort of burst through this after like loads of about 15, 20 minutes in. I remember getting closer and closer to this like black circle. It was all purpley and stuff around it. And it was almost like a pupil to an eye. And like as I sort of tried to deep breath and then my last breath sort of broke beyond it. And as I got beyond that, I was with the stars. And I was literally just flying through what looked like space. But it wasn't clear, clear, but it was what I could what I thought it was. But the person kept saying, if you see things, don't concentrate, you know, rah, rah, rah. So I was listening to the voice and I struck, that's something, a little note for anybody that hasn't done it. You might find that you don't need a voice, uh, hip, not hypnosis, um, meditation. What, do you, what would you call that? Um, 
Um, there's a name for it when someone talks you through it. Like trance therapy? No, it's a, it'll come to me in a second. Or you can just have like a meditation frequency and you just get deep yourself. But I found that I couldn't just put a music track or some nice frequencies on. I had to really get someone... You needed talking. to be led Guided, in. guided meditation. Yeah. Guided meditation. Yeah. And if you haven't got a voice guiding you that you don't relate with or you don't resonate with, sorry, or it doesn't feel right, like a counsellor, if you've got a counsellor that you don't see eye to eye with or you don't connect with, it's never going to work. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, why guided I meditation, I loved it. Um, I, def- I don't know if it made me feel good, but I know that it has great benefits. I definitely felt relaxed after doing it. And what I see happen for example, on Health to Mind back in the day when we got the young people meditating, Mm -hmm. is actually, even if it's just a five-minute body scan, for those that swear that they'd never do anything like that, you know, meditation and start laughing or ridiculing it, it's like it can benefit everybody, even if it's just deep breathing. But some of them fell asleep on Mm. the mats. But we used to use um, meditation music, but it was... It was me that was guiding them. It's you doing the guided meditation, yeah. Through and stuff like that whilst we were in. And we used to do it at the end of the sessions. But when I used to end, I used to always end energised mm. to give them back that energy coming out of that sleepfulness, that little trance that they used to go into and then make sure that they were really energised. And I remember we did that with Develop. Yeah. I and can so, see the whole hours. It's literally yeah, there. I was just thinking about same it. Same here. And um, I just can remember, because we've done so much work with those that do have special educational needs, their brains, everything functions slightly different yeah, for them. It's true. So if you can create behavioural change there, you can create it anywhere. That means everyone, or mostly everyone, has that capacity to change, to get better. We can communicate even much more better. I'm even now, I don't even do sign language, right? But I'm actually learning sign through communicating with nonverbal students. No way. Because they're telling me. So I might be saying, what? <laughs> but I can, I, I'm, I'm like, when I start copying them, they'll, they'll, up, yeah. they'll be like, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, open or something. <laughs> like, next, next. <laughs> you know, what are we doing next? Or something like along those lines. But students are helping us yeah. when we do our work. Even though we've come packed with bags of tools, they're the ones that help us. And through them helping us, we then guide them to better outcomes, things that they want. Yeah, you might have just hit the nail on the head there because that might be why a lot of tutors are struggling because they're not willing to take advice or help or support from students because in their mind, they're there to teach them. When actually... Life is a one big lesson. You don't ever stop learning. Mm. So a young'un can teach an elder. It's a, a young'un should respect their elders. Should they, though? That's another question. Respect all elders? What, do you just respect them because they're at a certain age? And some teachers, not all of them, again, I've got a lot of respect for teachers, man. I sound mm. like at times that I haven't, but I genuinely have. I wouldn't be able to do what teachers do. Mm. I know that what we do, we get to see the best of both worlds. We get to enjoy the challenges, enjoy the the struggles that they face within the education system, but we also get the goodness and we get the vibes and we get to create that energy and create that mindfulness, but we get to leave. <laughs> we not there also every day. get valuable information. We do. Yeah. Like those, you know, we are always communicating and I think one of the things I've learned from young people is that for us as facilitators, it is so important that we come with our authentic self into the room, yeah. whether we've got things going on, because they, they're just intrigued sometimes. But we can learn from each other. I find that, for me, um, I remember working with a young... He was in year seven, and he used to get into trouble because he used to drift off. Like He'd just be in space, but he's in the room, but his head is somewhere else and he could be there for minutes so i asked him where do you go <laughs> before you just related to bit preferring to be there i'm like <laughs> space. <laughs> what did he say he said that's like his safe space that's like where he can think 
um, and he puts lots of things in there. So I said, oh, what's in there already? And he, he told me a couple of items that were already in there, and that was what was distracting him. That was what was taking his attention. So I said to him, what's your favourite subject? Like, what are you really good at? And he said, maths. I said, okay, let's put maths into that safe space. Year seven student. So I taught him how to put the maths in there. So when he was in the lesson, he'd look, and if he distracted, maths was in there. So I said, what else could we put in there? So we put a couple more lessons in. I think I next saw this young person either year 10 or 11. I was doing some cover teaching, and I called out his name. It looked familiar, but, you know, you work with so many young people... I can't remember. No, he no. can't expect it to, man. But he's, after I did the register and gave the objectives, he asked if he could have a quick word with me. So I was like, okay. So we went outside and then he was like saying, oh, miss, thank you. Thank you for helping me. And I said, I said, have you done the course? He goes, yeah, we, you, you was with me in year seven and I was getting into a lot of trouble because I kept drifting off. He told me to put maths in there. He goes, I put maths, I put geography, I put Spanish, I put all these other things. And he says, and I've been predicted nines. Nice. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So something that was getting him into trouble actually now became... This is like superpower, <laughs> man. Like, where, where is it, how does he locate this room, man, yeah. this space? Like, because there's... But, but he told me that, so yeah. I utilised what he told me. You know, some there are some resources, they could be in any sh way, shape or form. But you can maximise the very resource that you have. You can add to it. You can learn and grow from it. And I think if we can communicate with young people, children in a real holistic way, I think we can allow them to see more opportunities within themselves that they actually do have tools and techniques that do work. And they have some that don't. And yeah. how can we change those? Yeah, exactly. But they've got to be willing that. Be yeah, willing. and most of them are willing to work with people that are willing to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think we turn up because it's like our job. I no. think we turn up <laughs> because part of it is part of a purpose. It's part of a passion. It's part of we've had struggles in school. Yeah, and like, that is definitely why it works for me, 100%. Mm. And I said to Chris not that long ago, another colleague of mine, that this, I remember saying that when, when the passion this is out for my job with, with the current job. I've got to get out because if I was a teacher and I didn't have the passion to teach or to help others, why the hell are you doing it? Do you know what I mean? So you need to make your own call on that. If you haven't got that passion, but I think where we have still, and it's been five, six, seven years for me now that I've been doing this and that we've met. Seven years, seven Ruth, years, that's insane, seven years. But there's so much variety. It's because people are different. People come with different baggage, different problems, different mm. issues. But again, it's so relatable. And so, although it's so different, there's so many similarities. And where we can now share, me personally, my experiences and my challenges, which, like the guy that was looking at into space, mm. you know, that would have been me. And I would have been probably told for being disruptive or chatty. I was never really horrible or naughty, but it was just a, a coping strategy or a learnt behaviour because I would struggle in other parts of education, I come up with these strategies or solutions to counteract that. So that might have been being the class clown, because if I be the class clown, yeah, then they're going to ask me the question. Or if I tell them to shut up, you know, it's going to make everyone laugh, and then they're not going to ask me the question. Or I don't need to learn if they send me out the room. Do you know, I found ways of using my behaviour to get me out of those horrible situations where I was struggling, but... Back then, you know, it's a long time ago when I was at school, and I, it has gone a long, it's come a long way, mm. I think, the school mm. system. Absolutely. People will say it hasn't changed. I mean, it, the fundamentals haven't, I was like, but the people have that teach because there's a lot of younger teachers, there's a lot of people that have learnt new skills, that understand that there is the holistic approaches and not just a quick fix for everybody. Not everyone can sit down for that many hours in a day and not everyone is academic in that realm, but there's not enough for the people that need that extra support and I think there's not enough hours in the day there's not enough staff on their sites to be able to cater for it either which is not the schools or the tutors faults that's the people at the top I suppose that are not maybe giving enough funding for it or whatever but 
Yeah, I mean... But like you said, how we explore, we expand, I think that's what we're now starting to see within the school setting because of where we're at. Mm. Because the needs of the young people, children, have increased yeah. in certain areas, I think there is more now... Um, facilities, um, programs to support young people in the school environment. We know that because we've, we've it. done it. Yeah. And it is essential that in those, you know, what, five, six hours a day that an hour is spent on well-being, whether it is for the day or, you know, two, three hours in the week, I think there should be some opening for young people to access that because some may not want to go to the GP, some may not go to the school nurse, some may not be or waiting for a referral for CAMS. You know, we want to do what we can to help. Mm. That's why we continue coming up with ideas, creating programmes, looking at resources, working with other companies that, their main interest is in increasing well-being for young people because we know that they are the future yeah. and we actually want them to be here to enjoy it. I was going to say, it's not just the young people, though, is it, these days? Uh, the staff and the tutors and, mm. and other adults in other mm. realms of work are also struggling, but the children are the future, um, so it's not like we don't care about anyone above <laughs> and beyond that age, but <laughs> it's like we need to be realistic and there's only nine of us, really, and the other people that we work with and... Mm. I mean, it don't have to be in this line of work to be able to support people either. Mm -hmm. You told me about a little conversation you had with your neighbour, or one of your neighbours the other yeah. day, uh, year six or something, mm -hmm. stressing about the exams. I and know. Tell them what you said to me, or yeah. what you said to her, sorry. Oh, bless, yes. My little neighbour, um, you know, all the kids in my in my neighbourhood, you're all right, babe, you're all right, they're all playing. Um, but, you know, I think as an adult, especially when you are a promoter of safeguarding them, you want to know that they're all right. So when she said to me, are you all right, Ruth? I said, yeah. I said, school good? Just saying those words <laughs> opened her up. Boom. School good? She probably done a bit of... <laughs> No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I Reprogrammed her brain with no. one sentence. No, not even a sentence, two words. School good? <laughs> no, I'm joking. And bless her, she was telling me. Some of the things that she was saying, it did sound like it had come, it was being repeated from an adult, such as, you know, the lockdown didn't do her any good. She told me that she was four years behind on her work she's got sats and she was um stressing out so i said to her I said do you know something i said don't stress because when you go to high school you one you're gonna go and sit cats and i said the four years that you've missed out on learning is lifelong so you've always got to, an opportunity to learn it what you might not know today you could pick it up tomorrow i said have fun because she was outside the front playing i said have fun enjoy yourself what you know, you answer. What you don't know, you can make an attempt. And if you don't know it, there's no harm in learning it after the fact. So I said to her, enjoy this week, because it was the week of the sats coming up, because it was in half term, I think, or a yeah. holiday. I said, enjoy yourself, have fun, and just do the best you can. By the time we finished the conversation, she was smiling, she went back to playing, and she was more relieved from hearing that she's got to go and do it again. Just do your best. That's all you can ask of ch uh, children, especially in year six. The stress is not needed. It's not required. I would say that's adults putting their stresses on the children. But if she, this four-year gap that she thought that she had, I just closed that for her. Mm. Because yeah. we've got tomorrow. Yeah. And you can learn tomorrow well, and another it, thing. Because it is lifelong <laughs> lessons. Yeah. And the thing is, they didn't ask to be told to sit at, sit at home, and, and you know they didn't. They've they've been born into this world as mm. a, as we have all of us. Sorry, and it's like yeah, man, it is true what you're saying, man. The and there's, parents. There, there's parents, you know, at this moment in time, who schools are questioning whether their children are on the spectrum, that they may have special needs or additional needs, and and it's becoming a worry because as far as they knew their child may or may not have started school. They may have been that delay, the start-up, the integration, the socialisation. 
But because children are so resilient, it doesn't mean that they won't learn it at some point. Um, sometimes I've said to parents, get your children into some after-school activities or stuff at the weekend or other opportunities to help build socialisation skills. If they enjoy a certain particular um, activity, that they should encourage that, get them to go Um I'm just like always trying to think of things that will allow children to do better and increase by practicing. If you do something over again, over again, you're going to get better at it. 100%. And that was what I was trying to lead on to. You know what I said about the short term pain, long term gain? Mm. We also speak about like, and you'll know more about this because of the NLP and stuff, but uh, is it the neuro patterns or the neuro, what do you call them? Not neuro links, but you know, you've got the neuro, um, neurological pattern. Yeah, well, when you do something, you keep doing it. What are you going to do? You're going to create a little pathway from one node mm. to another, like waking up in the morning and brushing your teeth. For, for obviously, kids, young kids, and that, you know, still have to be arsed, and sometimes they get a little bit you know, dragging their feet. Yeah. But as an adult, you wake up, you know that that's going to happen. And there's loads of other things that we do on a daily basis that we don't need to put any mental thought to because it just happens. We conditioned ourselves to do it. It's no different than anything else. We'll probably suck at it at first. We probably won't be any good, but you get back on the horse, you get back on the what bike, whatever it is, you carry on doing it, you get over that struggle and the challenge, and you're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to get easier. Mm. And, it's, it, and it could be changing the can for can. For example, mm. it's going to be difficult to keep reminding yourself uh, some motivational guy I watch on YouTube, Sadu, I can't remember his name, he's an Indian fella, big beard, turban, lovely guy, like he's so motivational, Ruth, man. I'll send you a link, you've probably seen him online. But he says, like, just literally start the day with, it's a bit like Captain Tom, today's going to be a good day. Mm. Literally start, when you put your feet on your floor from getting out of your bed, tell yourself out loud or in your head if you want to that today's going to be a good day. And I've fail to even commit to that but I know if I'd done that every single day if I set it on my alarm when it goes off at seven o'clock or whatever if it actually stated in words today's going to be a good day that would that's me one visually seeing it mm. for someone with my brain I have to see something sometimes and say it and then maybe write it to make it embed into my mm. but that's another story but yeah to start off there's solutions so I might not remember to do it every day but then there's a solution to that I can put it as an alarm mm. so if I start doing that as an alarm after a month of doing it I don't think I'd say anything other than waking up to, and today is going to be a good day but then something major might happen and we might get knocked back mm. might feel deflated you know life is full of obstacles right so these are all great solutions and great practices it's not always guaranteed and it can be easier said than done and there's going to be knockbacks. There's going to be times where you feel like you can't get up and you can't sort that out or you don't want to do that challenging thing because you're just not feeling it. But that's good too. You can have those days, right? Absolutely. So it's like... But yeah. the, 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 the point is not to stay there. Mm, yeah, you know, exactly. Because some, some people there. say, oh, I'm having such a bad day. And is it a bad day or is it a bad moment? Yes. And that's what I will question. Is it a bad day or is it a bad moment? Because if it's a moment, it's already past. Yes. We're yeah. now in the future, so why are you holding on to it? Yeah. <laughs> we know? just say it like that. It's like, <laughs> but it's the truth. It's true, yeah. And we don't ask ourselves these compelling questions to allow us to think to move on. Yeah. It's like when you said earlier, if it's internal or external. So what would you say, like, say you've experienced something. I'll give you an example. Yeah, give me an example. Because I'm going for it right now. My parents, I love them, I love them so dearly, but they're external. Yeah. Because they're elderly, they've got needs, they're differences, and it does get to me, trust me, I cry. It brings tears, but I question myself. <laughs> Is this internal or is it Excellent. external? Because sometimes I have to shift it from out of my body. I have to take it and literally put it out of my body and start making decisions. What, what am I doing? Yeah. Because I do have my own internal things. But anything is, is me. I tell you what, my daughter will say, I'm selfish. <laughs> 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 she does. 
She says, you're selfish. And yes, I am, because I do think about myself first. I do. And you mentioned something about obstacles. We all have obstacles. Every day is not this up, ah oh, day. No. But there are days I'm just nice, calm, and peaceful, because within... I'm nice, calm, and peaceful. There's nothing eventful happening, such no drama, because that's the world I've created for myself. I did have a world that was chaotic, very noisy, but it didn't do me any good. So I started to create what was the life I wanted for myself. And in order for me to create that, I had to create a family plan with my children in order to create the life I wanted when I put my key through the door, I didn't want to be cussed out. I didn't want to be cussing because you didn't wash up and this, that, and the other. I was like, let's just create how we want to feel within the house because the chaos can stay outside. Yeah. All the and things the thing that is, we're you in wouldn't have been able of. to do it without being a bit selfish because if you wasn't, you wouldn't have ever started to put yeah. yourself first. And if you're not working, how are you like when we go into Work. We have to be real. We we open it. We own it. Sometimes, if we're having a bad day, you know, we'll express that because mm. if we're not putting ourselves first, how are we going to be there for other people? How can we support other people if we can't support ourselves? It's not going to happen no. emotionally because you have to keep your own emotions in check. My dad, my mum said, my dad fell the other day, and as soon as she said that, I started welling up. And then again, that was an external that came in interrupted my internal <laughs> flow and so the first thing is he okay because <laughs> that question starts to help resolve yeah, my yeah. internal <laughs> to yeah. then start thinking in a more logical way about what can be done because you know how some of us are we want to just vroom, to go in and help and sometimes it's not always feasible yeah. my mum reassured me that he was just shaken up but he's okay and things like that and then I start saying to myself well this is what it's like at this time of life you end up going kind of back to your you know like a, a baby kind of thing you mm -hmm. know unsteady on your feet these types of things when you get to, so this is how I have to then switch that external deal with it and then put it right back into its place because actually I have no control over it yes I got upset but it didn't last long I had a little tear and then boom because I had to change my state because I could have worried about that and I'm like how many thousand miles away then <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean and going on and, a downward uh, what's spiral what's it gonna do what is it gonna do it I, wouldn't nothing. have benefited me no. in any shape way so what I do is I literally talk to myself I know there's many people that say that they don't do any of those things but if I don't talk to myself imagine if I'm talking to you and I can talk very clear to you and tell you this that the other but I can't talk to that myself I think I'm probably more harder on myself if I'm honest yeah the way I talk, especially the tones, if I need to get something done, I have to talk to myself in a certain tone to get my ass up. Give to us get an it example, because I was about to do it. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to. Go on, no, go on, go on. No, go I can't on. now. I can't even remember what I was going to say, but it comes to me. And I'm like, I can just imagine you shouting at yourself, like being that real, like, sort of drilling yourself in some ways. Like, do, do you I, actually... I wouldn't say I shout at myself, it's the tone. Yeah, go on, give me. It'd a... be like. <laughs> Ruth, you you need to get yourself up right this minute. <laughs> get and up. You need to, and and this is the thing. You need to. You hear that? Mm, the you language, see what I'm saying? The it's the language. Because the thing is, sometimes we have wants, we have desires, we have goals. But when something needs to shift, I need to do that. I need, to, and we may do it without even. Re we have, we have those moments where right I'm gonna lounge around for till eleven o'clock yep. and then it's five past eleven and something <coughs> in us we say right I need to get up now and and we actually get up because we're programming ourselves to get up because we know there's something that we need to get doing. If I said to myself, Oh Ruth man, you really need to get up. Yeah. And you really need to get your ass up. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you like carry on talking. You <laughs> <laughs> well, know what I'm yeah, no, it's true though. And the thing is, I mean, again, it's not everyone. Not everyone's going to be able to do that from straight away in no. day one. But it's going to take time and practice. But some people get affected by depression and stuff a lot more. It's not that they get affected by it more. It's just that they might struggle to get themselves out of that rut, and it's. 
they struggle to deal with the internal, external, whatever, or they haven't got a process in place like you have, which is why that voice has never got that tone with their own voice, has never taken that toll on them or whatever. They've never listened to it or they've just felt so deep but within, if, I suppose. If in those states, because it is a pattern, it's a language pattern that is like, oh, I'm no good. Not going to amount to nothing much. Yeah. No one wants to be around. Da, 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 da. A depressed person may have depressed toes and things like that, and that that supports the narrative of where they are. Could you then? Would you say if you know when people say fake it till you make it? Yeah, act so as many if. different ways. Yeah, could, yeah, could that, that is work? a technique. It's a technique. Yeah, what man. Told you, man. Listen, sh- listen. Look, you know, even um, the Superman stance. Oh yeah. <clears throat> they were like, if you want to boost up your energy or. Feel stand confident, up. you know. You stand with the Superman pose for like two minutes and do things you need a like cape? that. Don't need a cape or nothing, do you? No, no but no imagine just—I know taking that stance. But the thing is, you're changing your physiology because, like, I was just sitting here like that. Yeah. But for me to do that, I had to put my chest, um, out, chest well. out and put my arms. But you know well, that's scientifically hips. proven to actually yeah. make you feel good, isn't it? Yeah, head up, chest changing out. position, just yeah. literally changing position is good. Even even sometimes when people like we're sitting here, we're talking, but I don't know if you've noticed that um, your positions changed several times while we're talking. I've realised how uncomfy these bloody chairs are. <laughs> you made a good shout getting on that office chair, but the only thing is, you look so much taller than me sitting down here. These are horrible. These are, <laughs> these are from my house. Oh. These are my old sofas from my house. I bought these on Facebook by sale for 200 quid about oh. five years ago. They ain't worthy for an office, a green room, or my house. I forgot the reasons why we gave them away. Um, but yeah, positions, I don't know. I, I feel, I, when I know there's a camera or talking, it does make me feel a little bit on edge anyway. Mm. And I do find it hard to get comfortable. But again, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's like... I, my posture in that, I'm always on at the kids for it. Because I believe it does, you know, for example, Mason, and I do the same. I'm not on the computer as much, but I'll be on the computer, my back's all bent up and stuff, and I'm not sitting great. Whereas Mason's completely different. He's got his legs up and he's all curled up into a ball whilst playing his computer mm. for hours on end. And then he's moaning, he's got a headache, he don't feel great, he feels a bit sick. But if you think about it, when you're all curled up like that and you're all twisted, none of your organs can breathe mm. and, and, and flourish and do what they've got to do and, and process all the stuff that's going through the body. So you're just you, you're suppressing or submerging. Or, what's the word? I don't know what I'm looking for. But you'd, it's not a good... Uh, uh, like I say, scientifically proven. I don't know how, but just that chest out and that thingy. I don't know what it does. Is it a sense that it releases dopamine or... It's a, change, it? like, it's a change in the physiology, just literally a movement. How, though? What is it that... that I'm not a scientist. So it works. I actually, it's been proven, I don't though. know specifically, but I do know that in practice it works. Yeah. Because we've done it with the children. We've done we've, it, I was going to say, it. yeah. Adam always even, about even it, yeah. when we're doing training for staff, yes. we've done these things yeah. because we're in situations where we are supporting staff they're going through mental health, they're going through depression, some of the things that we're talking about, and they're working with children and we have to help them change their yeah. state. Yeah. You know, there's t- look how many times we've had to actually say, oh, no, we have to take you off programme because really about You're well-being... You're no good to know one at the minute. <laughs> it's not even about no good to no one. It's, this is the time when we have to pull out the card and say, my mental health comes first. Because yeah. you said something about, you know, sometimes we all don't take our own mental health or whatever, yeah, well-being, advice, yeah. whatever. I do. I just want to say I do. I, I don't. <laughs> I, I will don't. put my <laughs> first. I will walk away. Because it means that much to me. Yeah, I value it you so should. much you that you as an external person cannot make, coerce, plan anything that I'm not in agreement with or could impact my mental health. I won't allow it. But that is through programming. And that is through programming because i had done a little bit of training a couple of years back. Just I think it was me and Crane. It was, I think it was called something like, oh, what was it, Understanding? Something like that. 
can't remember. It doesn't really matter. Was but it basically, live training? Or? It was in person, yeah. Oh, it was right. only like a two-day thing. Oh. Um, yeah, I think it was called Understanding Teenagers or something along those lines. But it's a, again, vocabulary came up so much. And not just the changing the cards for this and can and blah, 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 blah. But it's like just, just the way that you are talking and, and the way that you're expressing or to other people. Not even... Like, if someone, for example, the, the bit that got me is, like you've just said, you no one's changing your your, your ability and your or your um, well being, or no one's you know putting things in place that could deter that or make that worse. You're not allowing that, mm. and you shouldn't allow anyone to make you feel anyway. And that's what this woman was saying to us, and it's like I get that, and I get it. Like no one can make you feel. They can say things that could upset you, but you actually have the power. Like, to not let that upset you. Mm. It's up to you how you take that. Like, yeah, but he just called me this and he called me that and he told me I'm useless. Mm. Like, but, or he's not listening. They're arguing and they're not listening. I'm stressed. You lot are stressing me out. You little... You little... If someone has said that to someone mm. for a long enough time, they're going to get conditioned that they are only that, what mm. they're saying. So that's not great. But also, it's like, yeah, they might be disruptive. They might be talking back at you, but... You don't have to be angry for two days about it. You don't have to be angry for an hour. You can deal with it, mm. but it's 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 you can't put that blame on a young person or on your partner or on or on your friend. So you're pissing me off or you're making me angry. No, 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 no. They're, they're doing something that you don't like. Mm. You choose or you should be in power of your emotions. And I'm not completely in control of my emotions. I suppress a lot of my emotions. I'm not one to say I'm, I'm not going to lie and say I do deal with them as I can when I can. Uh, I'd love to get to the point where Ruth is, but you know we are learning. I'm learning. I'll get there one day once I read that it, bloody it, book she gave me. It <laughs> does take practice. It really does. It's how we choose to handle situations. Like there was a period I was doing a lot of cover teaching at one point, and um, what I learned <laughs> was don't, students. Don't do it. <laughs> students hey <laughs> did, did you only just, just learn that no because i was a student was once before, but no th oh. there's an entrenched hate and i recall there was a time where um young person threw a hard book at me i have a visual impairment and it hit me somewhere near my eye now in other circumstances i would have blown up if i'm honest by cussing. I'm very good linguistical, <laughs> so I can make you feel some way just with my mouth. But I, I bent down, and in the time it took me to pick up the book, I had a choice on how I was going to respond. And when I picked up the book and put it on the desk, I stood up and I apologised. And I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm the adult in this room, and it seems that somewhere along the lines, someone thought it was okay to do that to me because I didn't know who threw the book. Anyway, I said, I, I apologised. And then one of the girls, well, why are you apologising? Because it was him that threw the book. So, well, and I found out who <laughs> threw the book. But I didn't know why, but... I remember that um, I had three senior leadership members of staff come to my room and they were asking me if I was okay. So in a lot of schools, they've got cameras, so I don't know. what. But I remember I seeing three was, yeah. staff members come in, they asked me if I was okay, and I said to the students, I said, ask them if everything's okay. I said, yeah. So two, <laughs> I never said anything. So this kid is now confused as hell yeah one i threw a book at her she didn't get mad she Two, apologized. <laughs> and i'm the one in the wrong it turned out this young person his dad was in prison and he was suffering with a lot of behavioral challenges he actually felt a lot awkward anyway i managed to get all this out of him through the route that i chose to take yeah. and by the end of that lesson no, so what I started asking him is when did he last see his dad and does he want to see him more? Was encouraging him to write letters to keep that contact going and things like that. I gave him some advice and the young person shook my hand and he said, I've never had anyone, anyone give me the time of day. I'm the bad kid in the class. And I said, you're not bad, you're just missing your dad. Mm. 
and he started welling up in tears. And sometimes, you know, again, another presupposition is, you know, children are not their behaviours, they're in their environment. And sometimes when a child is acting up and displaying, you know, high levels of aggression, I don't see that. I then go further to find out what is the root cause. What's the root? And then actually give them some solutions or help them to explore solutions and then set them on their way. But unfortunately, not everyone is like that. But if we could get more people like that, because how many times have there been people out there like that person, like the person staring into space at the beginning of this conversation, like myself that used to get classed as a a disruptive student because I couldn't learn or I wasn't academic in their eyes, couldn't Mm -hmm. sit still for long enough. I couldn't sit still. But, you know, how many people over the years have been conditioned in a way that's negative and has has had a negative impact on them because not enough people are are, are like that or not willing to be acceptant or give time. And again, life is busy. You haven't got all the time in the world for everybody. We haven't. We work with a lot of people and we can only do what we can do. But sometimes you just need to ask yourself, why would someone do that? Yes, it can just be because there's, they're, they're, they're just a little bit boisterous. They've got a bit too much energy, but there could also be something below surface that you can't see. And they often say, and it's so true, that hurt people hurt people, right? Mm-hmm. So if someone's chucking a book at your face, <laughs> and I'd love to have been there just to say, just, um, you know, I shouldn't laugh, but I know what school you're on about, and they have got CCTVs, and I know them three staff would have seen that <laughs> and probably recorded it. <laughs> and I'm going to ask him when I go to the next. <laughs> Have you got the video proof of the book Jack to her face? <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't You're laugh. terrible. But it's like, you know, that nine times out of ten, they'd have got a rollicking for that. They'd have literally been probably, you know, in most settings, suspended. Mm. Or even suspended, maybe even excluded, yeah. depending on the student. But a lot of the work, we're very fortunate, I'm very grateful to meet people like yourself, like, and, and we've got a lot of people that are very much on our wavelength, like on the spectrums, different levels and that. This is Ruth McKenna, not really Ruth McKenna, but it's... Ruth, Ruth Carter. Ruth Carter. I knew it was Carter, I didn't want to give you a second name in case you didn't <laughs> want to share it. So, you know, for some people don't want to share the second name. My name's Max Alfredo. Alfredo? It's not really, it's giving two tips. They know I am. Um, but no... I think people do need to be a bit more considerate. Mm. Hurt people do hurt people. And it may not be, you know, it, it doesn't mean to say that what people do. Where, for example, if someone's bullying someone, right, the chances are they've either experienced it or they're going through something at home. They could be. They might not be, but the chances are there's something going on. Now, that doesn't excuse their behaviour. Mm. But if you understand it from that point of view, then it might make you not take it so personally when someone is targeting yourself, whether that is continuous bullying or a one-off thing that happened, you won't take it as personal because you might understand. How do you help equip that young person, that young child in that moment of bullying? No, that's the thing. What do they say? I know for sure it's highly likely that the person doing the bullying is having that happen to them because Mm. in most counts, when I've spoken to young, that seems to be the case. case. But again... Having the gift of the gab is a blessing. Yeah. Really is. Because if if you can run <laughs> yeah. and you're quick with your math, <laughs> you can turn a situation around. Look, comedians have this skill. Yes. They can pick out little flaws and turn it around. Because I my, my daughter was being bullied by a boys. She actually used to get bullied by boys. And I know sometimes boys, when they like girls... Yeah, they yeah. do that kind of behaviour. But I said to her, just turn around and say to him, uh, something like, your face is challenged or something. <laughs> just some, you know, quick. Anyway, she did that and she said, everybody started laughing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I said, and what <laughs> happened to the bully? She goes, he walked off. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes if you're skilled, you can do that. But sometimes you've got to learn to run. Yeah, or say nothing. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Because... Let's touch on another situation series. Kids are not like how they were when we were young because 
Now they have weapons. Yes, it's and, a um, one, yeah. it's it, it you can you don't want to put anybody's life. Well, that's at what risk. I was going to say. It's a fine line. We had these conversations <laughs> because we've been doing anti-bullying programs and sessions and stuff, and it's like we want to say exactly that, and we do have conversations like that. But we also said like we don't know what the outcome's going to be. And we have yeah. to say this to the young person, so you can stand, you know, we've all got fight or flight, we've mm. all got that condition within us, you know, from way back when. And, and we'll experience those early warning signs and we might even, you know, have the thingies to stand, fight the situation maybe in a verbal fight or a comedic way, a little bit of thingy back to try and, you know, what your daughter done. Could work. Might not. <laughs> but I have to say, this was some good few years ago because my children are adults. But thankfully, because of the changes, the developments yeah. to safeguarding, especially within education, banter, bullying, all those things are now safeguarding issues, yeah. which you can report to the designated safeguarding lead, which then would minimise any young person, child, being at risk of any combat. So I think... Really, in terms of our roles, what we would be doing now is reporting that through to our lead. I know this is definitely in school. Um, that was one of the changes, I think, for 2022, 2023. Yeah, any school you go into, I've been in about 15 this year, and every single one has got see it, say it, or report it. Yeah. Know, they've got a little slogan going yeah. on. It's not guaranteed. It's not, but, but it's, it's better that we report right it direction. because then... What we'll do is when they do measure up the statistics on such and such, you can start to see where some issues are. You could do some work around ch changing behaviours, such as some of the anti-bullying courses that you go into school to do. Um, it's basically equipping children to know what is right from what is wrong. Because yes. I've heard, like, back in the days, you know... Oh, I said that's that's that doesn't sound right to me, and they'd be like, "Oh, but it's just ban." Uh, no, I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. We're not having any of that. We can take it that step further, where we can go to the days of safe life, um, safeguard and lead. It can be down as um, a report, and then certain consequences measures can be made in terms of what the school setting's doing and how you would deal with that within the community. Would probably be along the same ways because we've got contextual safeguarding as well which we've done some training on recently yeah. so i think for young people i know i speak a lot about them but it's about protecting them not just for now but for their futures mm -hmm. because emotional well-being is critical we're in we're in you know still uncertain times we still have um challenges with some students not eating a hot meal a day yeah. um and and it's and it's hard um so we just want to kind of bring some fun some confidence self-esteem empowerment knowledge growth yeah. better outcomes so that they can enjoy life as best as they can right this moment and even if we can only you know, tick boxes for a couple of those things that Ruth just said. If they're getting a positive outcome, if they're getting empowered, even if it's only empowered enough to say no, mm. and say right, right, that is a massive plus. Because the thing is, it is so true. So some, we, we try to give these young people voices, but actually their voices get taken away from them pretty much. They, get, they learn the basics and through parenting and stuff, we teach our kids how to speak, how to do this, how to do that, and then we teach them no. No, you can't do that, and you can't do this, and we start to then submerge and sabotage them, their dreams and everything else, and then we have to build them back up, and with the knock-on effects of lockdown and everything else, I feel like there is a lot of people lacking the confidence to even speak out. Um, that training I've done was with a woman called Sally Ann, actually, that protective behaviours, understanding mm. the teenagers thing is, that was mm. Sally Ann, protective behaviours, and two of her slogans are like, everyone has the right to feel safe all of the time, Everyone has the right to speak about something, no matter how big or small. <sighs> Sorry if I got that wrong, Sally. I know it's been a long time, but I pretty can't believe I remembered those. It took me two hours nearly for it to come back. But it's true. Like It doesn't matter how small it seems. If you're not feeling comfortable about that situation, whether it's from a bullying point of view, banter, because, again, fine line between bullying versus banter. Who decides whether it's banter? I know I've been a young person. I still have banter now with friends and family and stuff when I do see them. But... It's not down to me to decide whether that's banter. It's only banter if it's 
banter and it's a little in-house joke. But when you look at what how some students act with one another, I'm like, like you just said, that ain't banter. And it's having those conversations that they may be laughing with you, but they're not enjoying that, mm. right? And those things you're saying, they're going to hurt a lot of people's feelings and offend a lot of people, not just this guy or this person. And yeah, he may be a big person or whatever it is that you're calling him and vice versa, but you know, and you're mates, so it's all right. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. But how do you know he's not going home worrying about what you're saying or at least losing sleep about it or feeling depressed about it? Because what I found is, and this is why I think it works so well, when I have these sort of conversations, I'm like, look, I get it, I've been there. But at the same time, when I left school and I bumped into a few people that I used to take the mickey out of, you know, I'm, I'd like to think you'd have the same sort of response and reaction as I did, and I felt guilty. I felt like a stupid person that definitely made that person feel more uncomfortable than they did comfortable. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it was banter, and it was a bit of fu it was a bit funny. Mm -hmm. The worst case scenario, and this is what I don't want to happen to anybody, is you do that, and you have all that sort of behaviour going on, and you're bullying or whatever because you're suffering, and then that person that you've released your beast onto has now ended their life like because it gets as deep as that doesn't it and that's the realm we're in it's like it can get as deep as that so it's just be a bit more thoughtful when we're sort of having banter um but also being more understandable or understanding for those that are releasing the hurt and pushing out the the, the, the negative vibe on others because you know there's always something at the root of that um but also we need to sort of take control of our own stuff as well. Do you know what I mean? It's so much. This is, can you see now why I want to get this woman talking in front of a microphone, yeah, man? Yeah, I'm Jeez, telling you. I do, because we're not, we can't put the world to rights. But no. I feel like even if five people got anything from this and started changing their vocabulary, started even talking to themselves in either a more positive way or even a bit more stern, Get your yeah. ass up off that sofa roof. Oh. Come on, girl. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> Come on, girl. That's how <laughs> yeah. But Especially no. if the outcomes are good for you, that you get benefit from it and that those that are around you do as well. Because if you're not being a bit selfish and, and benefiting yourself and, and feeling good, then that's going to, you know, it's going to go out people to the People are suffering well. from burnout, you know. We've got people in professions... Let's pick the nurses, for example, cool, working very long hours, doing a lot of caring um, for a lot of sick people. But when do they get their time to? You do you mean? Know? Do you mean? Do you mean the? Um, the you mean the nurses, the NHS? You know, the ones that was all going outside for banging pots and pans, going, "Way!" Can I say? Them a cheer, I them a cheer. never did it once. I can honestly say I never clapped once because I kept saying every Thursday they need a pay rise. Yeah. I was saying that. I mean. My brother be out there tambourine, banging, blah, blah, and I thought that, you know, community camaraderie yeah, was, nice. was great yeah, because and everyone whatever. Was the, yeah. Everybody was doing, you know, you wait for eight o'clock. Do I you think leave. they really yeah. appreciate that? All they were saying, the staff, was exactly what you were saying, is that I appreciate the banging of the pots and pans, but what I'd really appreciate is a bit more money. I just signed myself out of it. I understood the concept. I thought it was grateful. It was nice to see but I didn't think it was useful because if everyone that did go out clapping and whatever Donated put a, a pound, <laughs> yeah, every Thursday, yep. that could have gone into a bank for them that they could, you know, use if it was done in every town, if everyone was that particular about it. Yep. But I kept saying the clapping is not going to help their current situation. So it's, it's, it's a distraction. It's it was a, It was a distraction, I believe. My personal opinion, no one else's, not Bruce or anyone else's, mm. but it's mine. And I think, like, I get, I get the, yeah, I feel that. And when when you hear the people, like, it was a bit of a community vibe, it a bit was. of a community spirit, and it was nice. But that Lovely. could have been just done for anything. That didn't have to be for the NHS staff or anything like that. And, I mean, I get it, they're on the front line. Some people ain't seen their GP for, like, three years, <laughs> you know right? I mean? Hold on, I'm, <laughs> I'm still on hold. <laughs> Some people call the GP <laughs> on Monday and still by Friday haven't got a appointment yeah. and they were sick on Monday. But, again, yeah. my opinion, I think that is something that has been... Set up maybe because it's going to get pri it's privatized already in some we, ways. We're, like we're moving. It's a transition, isn't it? Into a different um, transition, and I think for all of us, maybe we should not look at the crisis, but look at what opportunities are within the crisis. Because some people seem to be doing very, very well, 
And some people are sinking, literally near to the bottom of the seashore. So what do we do for ourselves and others? Because we're moving into this digital age. There's still uncertainty. People you just pick up your phone and you get scammed. But we have to really find the right resources that we can thrive. Even myself started looking at um, some things in the digital world, you know, learning mm -hmm. um, different things um, like the digital currencies That's and coming. stuff like that. I've been saying it for about five years now. <laughs> and I was about to say, this sounds like the conversation is going to start going towards the silver tin. No, but, but we're not we're going to come down. back with that one. We're going to no, come back. We're not going we that way. But, but how, what I'm saying is like, when, when we know what we know now, and like, if you are in the presence of a two year old, they know how to use a phone and an iPad. Yeah. 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 I feel that they're getting a lot more information than we exposed to a lot more at a younger age. Even 100%. accessing, yeah. Because um, because I can say mine specific. My knowledge is for specific things. Because I I I don't have a need to know everything. I just want to know what is going to help me yeah. to get to Back that. Back to being selfish, though. But again, <laughs> that's like me with my ADHD. I, I I can't understand that. I can't remember certain information, especially like I'm doing my mental health first aider again, and I'm like, I should know this because I've done it before. It's like, but it's not stayed in there fully. I know if I needed it, sometimes it would pop back, but it's like. I think it's just me being selfish internally because I know that I'm not actually going to be going to... I remember things that benefit me in editing, for example, that have made my life easier knowing how to edit and work myself around a computer. So I can remember stuff. But it might be my inner selfishness. to like Because as someone said to me, is it like selective hearing? Is your ADHD, is your learning... You, you can't learn or is it selective learning? I'm like, I don't know. But it, now that you've asked me that, it could be subconsciously selective it's your filters sweetie mm. so like we have this ability to generalize distort delete information if you uh, program because i do that sometimes uh, so sometimes something comes and i will scan do i need this if not delete but do you do it though <laughs> when someone's talking to you yeah. <laughs> because like Sorry, Dad. It does, he comes around a lot and tells me about his job and that, and I do. I am interested. But for example, if I, you know, like I was on the phone to you for an hour the other day. Mm -hmm. That's what we, we got this set up, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And I, after the end of the conversation, I said we got to get involved and do this part anyway. Like when he got off the phone, when I got off the phone to you, obviously my dad was there. I neglected him for like an hour, <laughs> so he was just sitting in the garden. So then it's like I'm giving him some time to speak. Like he's come around here to see me, um, but he started speaking about a minute in. I was going back to our conversation. <laughs> so I've basically gone in my head, I don't really care about the job that he's on, it's not going to benefit me. All he's actually doing at the moment is actually moaning about the other trades that have let him down because they didn't turn up. And I know this happens, it's domino effect. So I switched off, boom. And I was back with you, even though you wasn't on the phone anymore, I was thinking about what we've been talking about. Why? Because it was relatable, I enjoyed it, and it was something that I was passionate about and interested in. Mm. So I think we have these filters again. I didn't really realise it then until you started saying, but yeah. it's like, I do do it. And like, yeah. zone out in space. I'm there because yeah. I'm just not interested. Squirrel, like the distractors. Yeah. And I think that is yeah. all learned behaviour because of whether I'm aware it's of it or not. It's our map. It's our map of the world. It's how we take in information because, you know, we were talking about um, people with autism, the overload and the reactions yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. It is, it's literally because it can get too much. So as much as our subconscious is taking everything in, consciously we get the choice to switch on, switch off. And so... Sometimes it's like, no, I don't want that information. I'm not banking that. Sometimes people will say to me, um, oh, I want to tell you something, but even not to say nothing to anyone. Well, then when they say that, I'm not even listening. So you're <laughs> sorting because you can share. Some people just want to talk, innit? They just, you can share what you got. I'm going to forget, yeah. but I had to do, I had to be a part of a uh, surprise, right? So I... I, all I needed to know what the date was, and I said to them, let's be fluid. Let's not set anything in stone, because if, if I have to start doing all of that, it's not going to work. The person that the surprise was on had no idea, because even to get in the train, it was like, oh, my, that's fine. 
and I'll text them and say, we're running late. She had no clue. But if I had been like, no, we, we need to get here, it would have alerted her yeah. like as to why do we have to get there at a certain time yeah. when we're only going to, do you know what I mean? We're sitting in St. Pancras, having a drink and everything, and then someone calls her name. It was friends that had travelled from Italy, but no she way. was totally blown away yeah. because of the way you go to executing that yeah. but i had to just remember two things the date and that the reason why you're coming i just wasn't even paying any attention to that because i just wanted to be on task with the things that i had to do yeah. and that was to bring that yeah, person in order to get the job done. <laughs> yeah in order to get the job done. so basically what we're saying is <laughs> sometimes you've got to get the job done and yeah. sometimes less is best so there we yeah. go I Believe think we should uh, summarise it. How long do you reckon we've been talking for? I don't know, but I'm sure that, you know, there have been different little elements that we've touched on. That, oh, yeah. You, know. you can see why I want to do this, right? Yeah. How fun is it? It's just it's a conversation. I hope that people that are going to get to watch this, if it ever gets out into the abyss, into the masses, yeah. and it'll be great. Ruth will be sharing. I'll be sharing. Yeah. Hopefully get some snippets, some clips, or maybe one long-ass video out of this. But the idea is... You know, talking is good. And just talking about experiences. We're not claiming to be experts, right? No, not at all. Well, me, for young people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm no expert. I'm going to own it. I'm not. Do you know what? I'm just going to... That's another thing Sally Ann said. Don't, in quite, don't include anyone else when you're, when you're claiming that... <laughs> so students all the time. He does. He says it. He he sells this and he does that. He told Miss to have, no 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 yeah. own your own. Yeah, right? I am no expert in this. Ruth is definitely an expert in loads of stuff, which is why I love her so much. And just the energy, the vibes. Obviously, this is a sit down conversation. If you've got anything on mind or you think that we could speak about something else that's current within the world, because you heard it a minute ago, we can divert down rabbit holes any direction. Talk about government, talk about, pol not really politics, but we can have a dabble in it. We can talk about education, we can talk about work, we can talk about NLP. It can be about anything. Digital currency, the future, 20-minute mm. neighbourhoods. We've been speaking about it all. Yeah, because we keep ourselves informed for the things, again, that's going to have an impact on us. So, yes, get your tinfoil hats out and we'll join you on episode two. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there anything you want to say to summarise or anything? I think no, we've done it really it's, it's nice. It's been great. It's been wonderful being here. I've been in connection with Here to Listen for some time now. I think over the last seven years, it's been a wonderful learning and working experience with you and the whole team. And I just believe that we'll go on to do more things to help create a better community for us all. Yeah, nice. Done. Awesome, Ow. man. Right, see you soon. Take care. Mwah. Yeah. Mwah. <laughs> oh, mate, I love it. I love it. That was oh. good. Yeah, I'm busting for a piss, though. Go. Busting. My phone was ringing. Your was it phone yours? was I ringing. I couldn't hear the vibration. I could hear it. I couldn't. I put it I thought on it's disturbed. Mine. <laughs> because if people call me a couple of times... You've got to answer, you could have just answered because we can edit bits out. Uh